I would like to explain you something wonderful. I have come with a mission to develop a, a curriculum for children from 1st to 12th on human values, ethics and wisdom development. So here I would like to explain you some key points of our concept on which we would like to start some programs in your school. One is that we are trying to give you that kind of a knowledge, you know. After knowing, nothing remains to be known except living that knowledge and exploring it. That's the theme, you know. It covers up right from the beginning, the creation uh, and then how non-material became material and how it all started, how the life started here on this planet Earth and how when the life graduated to the crown of creation, the human body. And uh, it covers up the area right from the beginning when we thought we are a body only and might is right. And then uh, a lot of knowledge was gained and the people who were dependent upon the knowledge gained here of this time-bound material creation, they've been ruling it. Then uh, there were other saints and seers, you know, all religions wanted that something good should happen, the humanity should not fight and kill each other. Then they started conveying this message to the children that they are a soul. They are not mind, they are not body. But here in our concept we are not using those religious terms at all. What we have done is that we are saying that the soul is a creative intelligence which is connected to its source, which is absolute intelligence and a capital force. With its outer expression is attention. And this attention is like a spark which can see in all the directions, it can act, act in all the directions, it's a multitasking ability and it has got certain attributes like love, compassion, mercy, wisdom, patience, humility, state of art, planning ability, fearlessness, etc. Now this is what is the, the creative intelligence which the child must know that he is that actually, so that it increases the confidence of the child and then he uses his attention judiciously on the requirements of the school, you know, like your studies and he should give his attention judiciously to the requirements of his mind which can sway him into past and future because here in our concept we have explained mind as nothing but information of time and that deals with the experiences and events of your life. Based on that, we pre-calculate the future with fears and worries. All this is only information. And then we have got the third area, which is body. Body needs are hunger, clothes, housing, vanities of the world, sex and sleep. Now, we would like to train up the child by telling him how attention operates so that he can have that restraining intelligence in his behavior so that he can give his attention to the judicious needs or legitimate needs of mind and body. And he becomes a responsible citizen, keeping in view all the areas of life, including environment, including his uh, living, etc. Because the aim is how to be happy, how to be healthy, how to be prosperous and to remain connected to its source, and how to respect his parents and all others in his life and society, how the boy is empowered to face this world with a lot of competition. So we would like that the child should know it's not competition, it's cooperation. So how the child cooperates and how things happen. And the first story in our case is we start from a story of a seed. You know, it has got three things in it. One is its creative intelligence within the sea. And then it has got a mind you know. Mind means whether it is of wheat, gram or a mango. Because that mind has got all that information of the past and future or RNA, DNA. And then the third thing is the body. And you know about the needs of the body. 
So we explained in our first chapter to a child that look at this seed, which has got all these three things. If you put this seed into a dry sand, it won't germinate as soon as the rain comes or if you water the plant. Immediately the life triggers into that. The divine life triggers there. And tentacles like roots start spreading in many directions. So it's multitasking. And the bird starts rising up to gain energy from the sun to do that photosynthesis and to grow further so that all those energy needs are met. And then it can spread its tentacles into the ground to suck in all those required minerals. Then if it is about five, six inches tall, then we make a practical in the first class, in the first chapter, to put a box over the plant to block the sun and to make a hole underneath near the roots from where a sun ray goes every morning. So within a week's time, the plant will turn down and come out of that hole. That proves the child the first thing, that wherever the attention goes, the divine energy flows. The next story is regarding the uh, uh, sunflower. It looks in the morning towards the sun and by evening it turns towards the west. So there are many stories, including the neck of the giraffe and penguins, how they lost their wings and how the ducks would develop much more and how attention works on everything, how he can remember everything what he reads in the class by putting his finger exactly on those lines which he is reading, you know, like this, so that he can remember the spellings, the meanings and the interconnection of all those other words with it. So this is how we will develop that intelligence in the child and then tell him how to develop that restraining intelligence to hold his action. Then even we convey that how the language starts, the origin of language, so that the child knows that what damages language can do. So if you feel good about all this, please let us have your views on it. We can start our programs, do something wonderful in our school.